I certainly uh, do appreciate the opportunity to uh, come and uh, speak to uh, this group. Uh, but before I talk about the, um, uh, the monitoring that is required in this province, let me take this opportunity on behalf of the Minister of Environment and Sustainable Resource Development to congratulate the NSWA on uh, completing uh, the Integrated Water Management uh, Plan uh, uh, and uh, hopefully soon forwarding the, that plan uh, to, uh, to the department uh, in terms of uh, the recommendation for a path forward. I know that um, uh, for me, I, I didn't realize that the NSWA has been uh, basically in operation for 12 years now. And I think that uh, uh, you know, we in the, in the department sometimes we just lose track of uh, very valuable work that uh, groups such as yours uh, do and uh, certainly for me it uh, came a little bit as a shock that uh, you guys have been around for 12 years and you've been doing great work and I know that you guys have been doing great work and just uh, I just didn't think it was uh, since uh, roughly uh, 2000 that you guys have been there so congratulations uh, to you and all the members for uh, all the collaborative work that uh, you guys have done uh, and uh, certainly I know that uh, the NSWA has uh, been uh, uh, very much integral in encouraging a uh, watershed basin approach. Uh, so I'm going to um, uh, talk uh, this morning about uh, world class, I think you see on my uh, slide there, the monitoring in Alberta and integrated approach. And um, just before I uh, launch into uh, some of my uh, comments on this, I just want to preface my, uh, my presentation this morning as um, these are what I would call my early type of musings. So these are not um, what I'll call uh, fully uh, endorsed uh, by uh, government at this stage. Um, there will be a process at some point soon, I would presume, that um, I would have to stand before the minister, cabinet, etc., and uh, hopefully uh, these are the directions that uh, they would support. Um, so I just preface this that uh, while I, what I will tell you this morning uh, may or may not come about, and uh, I'm hoping and uh, betting at times that um, they more often uh, than not will. Uh, but it's also been interesting in the last three weeks since my appointment as the CEO of. Uh, the monitoring of here in Alberta, that um, I've done something that deputies don't usually get a lot of time to do, and that is to actually sit down and actually uh, think. Uh, deputies are uh, usually, uh, I know, deputies are usually uh, kept uh, quite uh, uh, quite busy, and um, in this early stage of the game, um, I, I've had the luxury of actually sitting down and thinking, so. Uh, uh, what I told my staff was is it's very dangerous to have uh, people such as us think because uh, when we start to think, uh, weird things happen. So uh, let me start, uh, if you can go to the next slide. Uh, a lot of you in this room have heard about the many uh, sort of strategies and initiatives that the Alberta government uh, have moved forward on. So there's everything from regional planning, the Lower Athabasca Regional Plan, the South Saskatchewan Regional Plan, uh, uh, the regulatory enhancement project you've heard about. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about cumulative effects management. We've had a uh, initiative in the industrial heartland where we've tried to come up with a uh, uh, integrated water management framework for the industrial heartland. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about new policies ranging from wetlands. Uh, there's been a bunch of uh, talk about recommendations on the monitoring that's required in this province. Um, one that you may not have heard about, but certainly is um, certainly up front and center is uh, with respect to integration inside of government and the development of uh, what I'll call government of Alberta pods. And these are uh, sort of a interesting way to describe the work of a number of um, government uh, agencies and departments in trying to integrate uh, their work. Um, so. I have no doubt that uh, people often uh, uh, will get confused that there are these many types of initiatives going forward uh, and the question that I would raise if I were uh, perhaps sitting in your shoes uh, in the audience this morning is, is, is all of that leading to anything? 
how does all of those initiatives really relate to resource uh, or the management of resources uh, within Alberta? And is there a framework that we intend to sort of be created as a result of all these, what seemingly are disconnected type of actions or strategies? Right? And uh, one might ask too, well, why is Alberta doing all of those things first? Well, just before I answer your question about is it all leading to anything, I think that uh, we all in this room recognize that Alberta's level of development and industrial growth uh, means that we do certainly need to improve the resource, uh, the management system in Alberta. And uh, really the Premier's charge uh, to all of the deputies is that uh, we need to, uh, to, to use her words, we need to up our game in order to ensure Albertans the prosperity and environment they expect. Right. So that's from a very, uh, very, very high level, that is the broadest uh, sort of identification of the outcome in terms of why are we doing all those uh, sorts of uh, individual types of actions. In the next slide. So at the end of the day, I would say that um, our integrated resource framework for Alberta really consists of three pillars and that the actions that I identified on the previous slide are all trying to move towards uh, having these three pillars solidified. Okay? The first pillar in my mind has been um, the Department of Environment sort of uh, move and the government's move over the last number of years towards cumulative effects okay, and, and the management of those <coughs> effects. Okay. And we're doing that by setting outcomes, whether they're outcomes set out in regional plans, outcomes that might be set in an integrated watershed uh, plan, we're setting trigger limits, or triggers, sorry, uh, and we're setting, setting the limits for what I'll call the, the capacity uh, of the environment in certain regions of the province. Okay. So that, to me, is the first sort of uh, pillar of our framework going forward. The second pillar is one with respect to the assurance function. And I put on uh, this slide that it is about policy assurance. So whatever policy that the government has landed on, what is our system or what is our path for assuring that those policies are indeed achieved? And we see doing that uh, through a number of ways. Uh, and, and one that I didn't put up there, uh, but I'll mention right now, is that it's about first having clarity about the policy. What is the policy of Alberta with respect to some of the extraction of resources and the use of resources in this province? We're looking for regulatory clarity in the sense of uh, do the uh, rules and laws of this province, do they clearly spell out what's the expectation of both the regulator uh, and uh, the applicant? Okay. And what is the operational excellence and efficiency of the regulatory system to allow those activities uh, to go forward? So a lot of you have heard about uh, the regulatory enhancement project and Alberta's desired intent to shift uh, to a single regulator for the upstream oil and gas and coal uh, sector. I'd say that that is an example of the policy assurance function trying to move forward. Okay. And the very last pillar that I would say uh, which forms uh, the, uh, the, the management framework for resources in our province is the environmental the monitoring system that's required. And it's a system that's required in order to provide scientifically rigorous data and information. So, to me, I think that that is sort of uh, one of my um, uh, uh, first uh, sort of uh, key messages to your group uh, this morning in that um, a lot of people are um, sort of looking at all the actions and saying, well, what, what the heck is the government doing and what what is the exactly the need to? And I'd say if you can at least keep these three things in mind, that's really what the integrated framework uh, for Alberta is uh, moving towards. Next slide. 
So let me talk about the monitoring piece. And I think, um, let me start with the asterisk that I've put behind the monitoring word uh, up in this slide. And I think that uh, uh, this to me has been uh, sort of uh, uh, one of the most eye-opening discussions that I've had with people over the last three weeks or so. Um, when I talk about monitoring, as you can see by the asterisk, I talk about, I mean, monitoring includes monitoring, evaluation, and reporting. And um, you won't uh, believe the number of people that uh, sort of uh, have this uh, puzzled look on their face uh, when they say, or when they ask me, why evaluation and reporting? I just thought that monitoring meant the meters that are uh, stuck in the middle of a river and the physical act of going out and perhaps collecting some samples uh, to uh, be part of that. Okay? And I think that if it were uh, that simple a job, I don't think the Premier would have appointed a CEO of monitoring uh, in this province. So when I talk about monitoring, I think it's very clear that um, uh, my intent at least is uh, that uh, uh, the, the monitoring function, when we call it that, is not just the physical type of uh, type of monitoring. It is also the evaluation of that information that is collected through the monitoring system, and it is the ability to report on that information that that is collected. Okay, so it becomes a little bit more uh, what I'll call broad and complex as a result of adding uh, the evaluation and reporting. Uh, sort of themes uh, to monitoring. Uh, but um, uh, just to um, uh, quickly go over that um, uh, really uh, from a, a sort of a, a perspective of why is uh, the monitoring required, uh, I put a number of uh, bullets up there that uh, really uh, sort of uh, lead to uh, why I think that it's important. Uh, first, it's about um, relevant data and information on the environment. Um, I heard this morning uh, someone's concern about uh, the spill that has happened in uh, her backyard. Okay. What is important for people of Alberta is having what I'll call timely and relevant information on what is the condition of the environment as a result of that. Okay. Um, certainly, uh, the environmental the monitoring system needs to sort of uh, be credible and trustworthy and part of that is uh, by having a transparent disclosure of that information. Um, certainly it contributes uh, to the management of cumulative effects uh, and from a, from a uh, sort of a policy perspective having that information uh, certainly informs policy development and certainly supports the decision making of regulators. Okay. Well, next slide. Uh, from uh, sort of uh, some thinkings uh, from both myself and uh, from uh, a working group that's uh, been uh, appointed uh, by the Minister of Environment and SRD, uh, these are what we believe are the attributes of a world-class system for Alberta. Okay. That any system that uh, is created uh, here in Alberta needs to integrate air, land, water, and biodiversity. It needs to be a province-wide type of system. It must be a, a monitoring system that addresses cumulative effects impacts. It has to be scientifically credible and operate in an excellent uh, sort of manner. Uh, and it is a system that emphasizes both baseline and environmental effects type of monitoring. Okay. So that last bullet is kind of important uh, and I say that because people say well where does um, compliance type of monitoring fit in? Is it within a newly created group or does that stay with someone else? And, and I would say this that um, the definition of compliance monitoring as I have it in my head right now is, is Compliance monitoring is all about the point source. Compliance monitoring is about did that particular facility, um, uh, who is monitoring the outputs at the end of their pipe or, or at the end of their step. 
And to me, that is not a function or a responsibility of the, what I'll call, uh, the monitoring agency, per se. It is a function and it is an accountability that should be laid with the regulator. <laughs> so, if the regulator is Alberta Environment and uh, Sustainable Resource Development, uh, then that responsibility should lie with that particular regulator. If, if the regulator, or if the single regulator that is uh, being thought of under the uh, uh, regulatory enhancement project uh, is, uh, is uh, ramped up, then it too has a role in ensuring compliance. So let's be clear that the attributes of a world-class system uh, really is about monitoring the ambient condition and being able to evaluate that ambient condition and being able to report on the ambient condition. The, act, the individual actions of a facility are, in my view at this point in time, should be under the accountability of whatever the appropriate regulator is. Go to the next slide. Um, we've done some thinking too about um, stakeholders in the system. Uh, I've used the term AEMS, and that's simply uh, just a acronym for the Alberta Environmental the Monitoring System. Um, there's a whole bunch of stakeholders that have a significant interest in the monitoring system in this province. Ranges from my colleague. Uh, Deputy ministers who, through their departments, um, have, a, have had historically a role in the monitoring. Uh, ranges from uh, First Nations, Aboriginal communities, Métis, and other representatives, uh, industry, agriculture, forestry, you name it, groups such as yours. Um, they're all interested in the monitoring system. Um, so to come forward at some point in time, um, uh, with a uh, newly thought up system, one that's province wide, uh, does require your assistance as well. It requires you to uh, uh, be able to uh, provide me with some feedback, to provide me with some input as to what you as an organization think about the system and think what your role is. Next slide. And the reason why I uh, have indicated that is, is that, from my view, and don't take this from a, uh, 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 any aspect of me just trying to describe the current system. We have a uh, large number of what I'll call organizations or individuals, as I put up on this slide, uh, doing or trying to do it all. So whether it's from the collection of ambient uh, type of data uh, to uh, putting in the infrastructure in place to do that type of monitoring, to doing a bit of analysis, to doing uh, the reporting of that. So Les talked about, or I think with Les or Dave talked about that in 2005, the NSWA, as an example, released the state of the watershed type of report. Great, great work. So I'm not uh, sort of uh, 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 saying that the work isn't good. Uh, all I'm trying to sort of indicate here is, is that we do operate pretty much as a collection of individuals and that uh, we don't always uh, sort of uh, have a good sense as to what everyone is doing in the, the uh, uh, province and to what extent they're either doing monitoring, they're doing evaluation, or what that information is really telling us. Uh, so I'm not critical of uh, all the work that has uh, been up to date. All I'm just indicating is um, I think that's the challenge for us going forward. How do we think about a integrated system? How do we think about uh, what I'll call uh, the role and function of each of the groups. Okay. And so that's why I've indicated uh, on this slide as well that uh, role, clarity, and function truly needs to be defined. Okay. And it's part of the work that uh, uh, that my group uh, will have to do in terms of uh, setting up the provincial system. And so that was why I uh, 
also sort of indicated that that's why we, we need your input going forward. That's why we need your feedback going forward. Uh, but at the end of the day, if we go to the next slide, really the desired outcome is a shift to what I'll call a centrally coordinated model, integrating all actions as part of the overall financial system. So this is not to say that uh, uh, we don't see groups, or at least I don't uh, see groups such as the NSWA continuing forward and uh, doing the excellent work that you guys are doing. It's about, okay, so how do we ensure that the excellent work that you guys are doing as an alliance, how do we, how do we coordinate that into the system? How do we integrate that into the actions that uh, we would need to take as a as a monitoring system for the province. Okay? A lot of groups have also raised with me that um, they think that uh, by shifting to a centrally coordinated model, it's about what I'll call it's all simply a rationalization exercise. That the intent here is to uh, uh, move away from uh, groups such as the NSWA or to uh, sort of uh, phase out uh, uh, such groups. Well, I'm here to say this morning that that is uh, that's that is the furthest thing from our intent. Okay, that it is not just a simple rationalization exercise, uh, but to me, it's recognition of value add, and it's about how do we um, use the uh, strengths of each of the organizations to sort of uh, uh, be part of the overall provincial system. The uh, next slide that I want to talk to you about is funding. And uh, this is always a fun slide to talk about because um, deputies always get um, um, at, at least one question, irregardless of the presentation or the discussion that a deputy uh, makes, uh, deputies always, always get a funding question. So I'm, I'm just going to tackle it uh, head on here. Um, from a broad perspective, um, there's always been an issue about funding for what I'll call the provincial system. Uh, and from uh, the working group that I sit on's perspective, uh, our belief is, is that funding needs to be obviously predictable, sustainable, long term. It needs to be s sufficient to support a science-based uh, program needs to be fair and equitable, and it needs to be administratively efficient and effective. And there's a number of activities that uh, funding is required for, and I've sort of listed them. Um, but I think the important point here is that um, for a long time, and I think uh, Dave True will know where I'm coming from, um, we've sort of hidden budgets for monitoring within what I'll call the department budgets itself. So um, they haven't been really explicit and uh, in times uh, when government has uh, funding shortfalls, as I'll call it, um, it's, very, it's very easy and very, uh, uh, what I'll call, it's very inviting to simply say, well, you know what, we can just slice off a little bit of budget here and we can uh, sort of impact the monitoring sort of uh, functions and it won't give us uh, that much grief. Uh, but I think going forward, uh, one of the things that has to be very explicit is what is the sustainable or sustained funding type of mechanism for monitoring in this province. Now, uh, this is where I really want to put an asterisk before uh, that um, what I'm going to say is definitely not approved by government yet. Okay? But um, there has been some thinking done about, geez, what are the ways that you could sort of uh, raise that sort of dedicated funding for such a system, okay? And believe me, there's been some, some wild-ass ideas put on the table, ranging from uh, what I'll call the, um, perhaps the, uh, what I'll call the impossible, and one of the impossibles uh, might be, uh, people have been musing about, well, does there need to be what I'll call a charge on water? Okay. That's not going to happen, trust me. Okay. Uh, two, um, would there be some additional uh, application charges that could be levied on 
uh, those who need to apply for various um, approvals in this province. Okay, so don't take it that those are the only things that are on the table. But I think the key message that um, that that I would leave with you is is that um, part of uh, what I see as uh, uh, our job uh, and the job of the CEO is to just try and figure out what is the method that we need to put in place to fund the monitoring system in this province. And not just fund it for a short term period, but how do we put in place the long term funding that's required for such a system because the monitoring of the environmental condition is not a one or two or three year type of uh, activity. So, um, getting uh, close to the end, so I'm just going to uh, just uh, touch upon, if you go to the next slide, uh, what some of the current actions uh, that are being taken. I think from an uh, uh, operational perspective for the 2012 field season, um, with the agreement that uh, we signed uh, with the federal government on enhancing the monitoring in the Bull Sands region, uh, we've had a number of actions that go forward. Uh, there's a number of new water quality uh, sites um, uh, within that region. There's increased sampling frequency, and there's been an, ex an expansion of the ambient air, uh, the monitoring network uh, within that region as well. Uh, I've talked a little bit about the working group that's been appointed by the minister. This is a working group that was appointed by the minister of environment and water uh, just prior to the election in April. Um, they were asked by the Minister to provide greater clarity on recommendations of the Alberta Environmental uh, Panel. Uh, that report is due by the end of June 2012 and I'm happy to report that um, uh, the uh, working group will meet its uh, timeline and have that report made to the Minister by the end of uh, this month. Uh, and uh, uh, I'm very happy about the next bullet which is that uh, the CEO of uh, of monitoring was appointed and to me um, what this really signals to me uh, at least is that uh, there is a commitment uh, from government to change the current approach uh, that Alberta has employed in terms of uh, the system that uh, we put in place. Okay. Going forward as I said um, the report of the working group uh, June 2012 uh, my expectation is is that um, uh, hopefully by the end of uh, 2012, uh, there will be policy decisions uh, from government and those policy decisions will provide clarity on what I'll call the governance of uh, the system that we need to set up and potentially on the mechanisms to provide s sustainable funding uh, going forward. Um, what you can also expect in uh, by the end of uh, this month, although we might be a bit late on this one, is uh, through the federal agreement that we have um, uh, on, within the Bull Sands region, uh, there is a commitment uh, that uh, the industry will fund a uh, significant portion of the monitoring uh, needs within the Bull Sands region. Um, the figure that has been bandied around uh, uh, is in the $50 million range. Um, industry is uh, working on a funding framework. Uh, my understanding is, is that they're relatively close. Uh, and whether we can get all the right signatures, dot the I's and cross the T's by June 20, uh, by June of uh, this year, not so sure that we can get there, but it won't be because um, we are at a fundamental disagreement on the funding formula. It's more simply the the, the actual administrative of getting everything uh, signed and sealed off by the end of this month. Uh, and the last point I'll make is is that readiness planning within the government of Alberta. Uh, that's part of the job that I have going forward, and uh, we're starting to uh, sort of do some of that readiness planning in terms of um, what needs to go forward. Um, one last point on going forward, um, the regional and the local perspective, um, certainly I would encourage the NSWA to continue uh, its excellent work uh, on, uh, uh, on things such as the integrated watershed uh, plan. Uh, 
Um, the other uh, challenge I would put in front of uh, this group is uh, really uh, to identify and to address opportunities for improvements in the regional uh, system for the monitoring in this uh, uh, watershed. I think uh, a lot of those actions uh, take place at the regional and at the local level. Uh, so any feedback from you on uh, what could be improved, uh, that would be uh, very important. Uh, and uh, simply, uh, uh, what I also see going forward too is at some point when the provincial system is set up, um, uh, part of what uh, we've been sort of uh, banning about is what is the role of regional and local stakeholder groups and uh, we think that clearly there is a role for uh, having those types of uh, groups uh, sit on some type of advisory board uh, to the monitoring system. Um, mechanics of uh, which we haven't quite uh, worked out fully, uh, but if you have any thoughts on that as well, we would appreciate uh, uh, your feedback into that.